Okay, well, welcome everyone. Today I will be giving, starting up again, hopefully um, starting up my regular weekly talk. Um, and today's talk is on a very special subject. the auspicious night or the auspicious attachment. There are two translations of this. I'm sending a link out here and I hope it works. Um, but if you want to read along, I think this link should pull up a PDF file for you. Let's see here. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to follow along, it's not really necessary. I'm not going to go by the script. And the, the problem with English translations of the Buddha's teaching are that they, um, they sort of give away the, the repetitive nature of the Pali text um, in a way that's not at all flattering because the Pali texts are meant to be recited and um, the, the Pali words and idioms are, are very poetic as well. So even reading the Pali, the repetitions in the Pali, is not nearly as arduous as reading the, um, the corresponding English translations. But the, um, you know, the outline is very clear. It just, it's just very, it, this isn't how we would, anyone would teach in English if you were going to uh, give this sort of talk. But it's a very um, cut and dry methodical sort of teaching. The, the greatest part of the sutta is the verses, which um, are in fact poetic. I think even in the English that is, um, is um, kept. Uh, and I'm just going to read them, read them in Pali to you, not that anyone here probably will understand them, or a few of you at, at any rate. But um, just, just so you get an idea of how it sounds in, in the original Pali. So we're starting at the verses here where it says, let not a person revive the past. And I'll go over it with you if you're not reading the PDF. But first let's uh, listen to it in Pali. Atitananva kameya napatikang ke anagatang. Yad, uh, sorry, let me start that again. I lost it here. Atita nanwa kami yana patikang ke anagatang. Yatati tang pahinan tang apatancha anagatang. Panchupa nanchayo tamang tata tata vi pasati. Asang hi rang asang kupang tang vidwa manu bruhaye. Acheva kichamata pang ko chanya ko chanya maranang suwe. Nahino sankarang te na mahase ne na machuna. Ewang vi harding a taping a horata. Matantitang Tangwe Pate Karatoti Santo Ajikate Muniti, which translates loosely as Let not a person revive the past or on the future build his hopes, for the past has been left behind and the future has not been reached. Instead, with insight, let him see each present ar presently arisen state. Let him know that let him know that and be sure of it, invincibly, unshakably. Today the effort must be made, tomorrow death may come, who knows? No bargain with mortality can keep him and his hordes away. But one who dwells thus ardently, relentlessly, by day and night, it is he, the peaceful sage has said, who has one fortunate attachment. I'm gonna say right off that I, I'm I'm ambivalent as to this this translation of the word ratta. Ratta can also mean night. Um, uh, it, it's not really clear to me, but the commentaries say attachment, so we're going to go with that. Um, I like the idea of thinking that this is, and this is the way they used to translate. There's like one uh, fortunate day. Um, no, I think that's. Um, I think that's a simile. I'm not sure about that. No, ratta, 
Arati means night, but rati can also mean attachment. Um, but here, I just I just want to go with this theme of of having one good day because um, today is the day where all around the world people are uh, making videos and posting them to YouTube to be used in a um, documentary. And so you've got, I don't know, maybe thousands of people uploading these videos and it's going to be put together by these um, award-winning directors who are, are going to make a documentary about it. It's called Life in a Day. And so I thought, well, what a better theme uh, from a Buddhist point of view um, where we, this is what we're all about, is living, living life for the day or living life for the moment. You know, there's this whole idea of carpe diem. Well, I would submit that Buddhism is the ultimate carpe diem. It's, it's the ultimate seize the day. And uh, I think this sutta is, is a very good example about the, of that. And we are always quoting this sutta. Don't go back to the past. Don't follow after the past. Don't worry about the future. Um, the actual translation here would be don't doubt or be concerned with the future. Because what is, what is in the past has already gone, what is in the future has not yet come. Living for the present moment and seeing it clearly. This is a v incredibly succinct um, summary of the Buddha's teaching, that we should live for the moment here and now. And it's a meditation teaching. It shows that Buddhism is not a um, theoretical religion. Some, it's not a theoretical path where we have to study and we have to um, master all sorts of doctrines. Uh, when it boils right down to it, it's living in the moment, living in the here and now, living in this this moment which um, most of us think we're already living in. And I've always talked about this, how we think we're in the present moment, we think we're here and now, we think we're um, ever-present. And uh, as a result, we think of that as a very mundane sort of accomplishment. We think, so big deal, you're here, you're now, I'm here, I'm now. Uh, I'm stuck here, I'm stuck now. And so really often um, our, our paths and our goals are, are all to be um, free from the present moment. And we can see how our activities are all based on going, uh, going after things that haven't come yet or worrying or fretting or um, dwelling on things that have happened in the past. And this should be immediately obvious to, to the average person that much of our life is, is living in the past or living in the future. And when disaster strikes, um, when, we, when we meet with some sort of um, calamity or misfortune, it can get to the point where we're, we're never here, we're never now. When we're driving, when we're walking, when we're... Uh, cleaning, doing daily chores. Um, we're, we're never here and we're never now. We're never with the moment. Right now when we're sitting sitting here looking at the computer screen and watching me talk, you can ask yourself, are you really listening to me talk or are you doing a thousand things at once? Are you also checking your IMs and and uh, looking at other websites and, and uh, you know downloading this or downloading that? Or are you really here and present? Do you know that you're sitting in the chair? Are you aware that you're sitting right now? Are you aware of the feelings that are arising in the body? Are you aware of the emotions that are arising in the mind? Because what happens is when these things come up, they drag us into the past and they drag us into the future and they drag us into um, concepts. They drag us into imagination. We suddenly start running away. They, they run away with us. Well, we'll be sitting here We'll be listening to, you may be listening to what I say, but then suddenly it hits you in a certain way, you like it or you don't like it, and suddenly you're off. You're thinking about something, you're thinking about how it reminds you of this or reminds you of that, or maybe I start to get boring and you start to um, wander off and think of something totally unrelated. Maybe someone walks into the room and distracts your, diverts your attention or so on. So... The teaching of, of, of the Buddha is to be present, is to know what's going on, is to be aware of what's going on. And that's really the essence of the meditation that we practice. When we start simply 